everyone, I am Nathaniel Rumpeljantz, your local boss man, and on today's episode, Nintendo is doomed! <laughs> well, first off, I want to say, hey, I got this new screen behind me, new background, it's doing crazy things! Yeah, I got myself a green screen. And some lighting, which you can't see because it's off screen, but it's making everything look all beautiful. Uh, yeah, I want to say thank you to some fine folks. They're from Photo Studio. That's the name of the company, Photo Studio. They provided me the lights. Green screen I bought myself, but they provided me the lights for free, so it was kind of nice of them. Uh, so thank you for that. But uh, today on The Boss Man, we're talking about Nintendo. We're talking about why they're doomed! So this week, Nintendo dropped a few bombshells, and I wasn't even planning to talk about this stuff this week, although it was for a future episode. Obviously, it's happening now, because Nintendo's news happened now. And, uh, Nintendo's going mobile! They're going mobile! Freak out! Ah! They are going mobile, they're gonna have uh, brand new games released on mobile, they're not re-releasing any of their old content, so if you're looking for them to put out rehashes or to say put a link to the past on the on your phone or the old super mario brothers on your phone it's not happening nintendo uh, was very adamant and it especially became true as we started reading interviews by time magazine from uh, mr iowata himself that they are not going to be bringing their old games to uh, mobile phones and tablets that's something nintendo is very staunch about so you are not going to see any game nintendo has already released on a mobile device, um, which almost seems a little odd to me because I think Pokemon Shuffle, a game or, or that they released in the 3DS, or Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, I feel like those games would work very well on the mobile platform. But uh, Nintendo is saying, no, we're not putting any of our current games that are out and released on it. So do not expect to see Pokemon Shuffle or Rusty's Real Deal Baseball or Zelda or Mario or Pokemon or any of those um, current games that exist on Nintendo's platforms on a mobile device. It's going to be all brand new games. It's also important to note that Pokemon has already made its foray a little bit into the mobile world, and that can happen because Nintendo doesn't actually own the Pokemon company. Um, they do not own Game Freak. Uh, they own um, some shares in Game Freak, and they have um, the full game, like the mainline game exclusivity rights, but Pokemon itself has been on mobile for quite some time in various ways. So now Nintendo's going to allow... Um, its actual IP that it owns 100% um, appear on mobile devices. And that has fans freaking out! Freaking out! The end of Nintendo! They're all going mobile! They're gonna stop making game hardware, stop making the games I love, and they're going mobile! Because they're gonna get rich! So they're doomed! That seems to be the reactions I've been getting from the internet uh, in the past few days, and I, I understand it to some degree, um, but Nintendo doomed? What, what does that even mean? Uh, in the past, um, people have been predicting Nintendo's doom for 20 plus years now, pretty much ever since they got into the video game realm. And you would figure if the doom part of it is that they're going to make so much money on mobile that they're not going to do game hardware anymore, then how are they doomed? If anything, they're more profitable than ever. So they're definitely not doomed in that way. But uh, this gets more into uh, Nintendo leaving the hardware business, and I think this is what fans are afraid of, and this is why they're saying they're doomed, because they don't really like mobile games, so if Nintendo stops making Zelda, if they stop making 3D Mario games, if they stop making uh, Metroid and all these great franchises that we love in a way that we prefer to play them, which would be with a controller, you know, even if it's not with your gamepad, you know, something that has controls on it, you know, has buttons and joysticks and stuff. Uh, you know, if they stop doing that, we worry that um, we're not going to enjoy their games as much and that we're just not going to care and that they're just going to be for the casuals. And I understand. I understand the fear. To, to kind of quelch this fear or put it out or try to put out the flames, um, Iowa did announce that they have new hardware coming, which should be no surprise. We knew they were hiring, you know, last year and the year before they were hiring a couple people to make new hardware or to work on ideas for the new hardware. Um, and we also know that this new hardware is going to work with their new membership program, which is going to replace Club Nintendo, and heck, it might even affect Nintendo Network IDs. We aren't 100% sure. We'll probably find out some news about it at E3, since they plan to launch this membership program at the end of the year. Yeah, we're probably going to find out about this membership program at E3. But the idea is that I wanted, I wanted to put out that we are not giving up on game hardware right now. We have a new hardware system coming, 
Uh, we're going to talk about it next year, which means the hardware is going to get... They're, they're going to unveil. They're unveiling new hardware next year. I mean, this is... Bravo, Nintendo! Woo! New hardware! I get really excited about uh, new hardware. And the reasons that I get excited for new hardware mostly stem from, from excitement over new hardware. I mean, I have the new Nintendo 3DS. I don't have it on me to show you, but I have the new Nintendo 3DS, and I love it. And uh, something Reggie said uh, is that they're going to treat hardware kind of like the new Nintendo 3DS, which to me sounds like they're going to start treating hardware like Apple does, where you don't necessarily have a new piece of hardware every year, but you have kind of a slightly upgraded hardware in between generations. So they launched a 3DS in 2011. They launched the new Nintendo 3DS this year in 2015 or late last year. So you're looking at a three to four year window where they launched a, a new upgraded system. And if they're going to start treating the future like that, in theory, they could launch new hardware. Um, if they announce it next year, it's probably not released until the year after because that's how Nintendo does things. They're not like Sony and Microsoft where they launched, they, they launched hardware the same year they announced it. Nintendo always announces it about a year and a half before they launch it. So if they announce it next year, then they're going to have a year and a half later in 2017, holiday 2017, they're going to launch new hardware. What this new hardware could be is anyone's guess, and I'm going to spend a good chunk of this episode here talking about that hardware. Uh, in 2017, it could be a new system to replace the Wii U. Um, the 3DS is going to be way dated and ready for replacement. And this also argues that the new 3DS and new Nintendo 3DS actually supposed to bridge the gap until 2017. And that makes a lot of sense, and I think Nintendo might start doing this with their home console and with their handheld. Uh, so if they launch two new systems in 2017, then we might not see new systems again until 2023, 2024, because three years or so into the lifespan of the next home console and the next uh, handheld, they might offer upgraded versions of them for people to optionally buy, and it's still going to mostly play the old content that the Elder System does, but it'll play some games that maybe the old System does not, such as Xenoblade. Uh, Chronicles 3D. In addition, there's all the bonuses they can look at in the future. Um, as an example, say they offered an upgraded version of the Wii U, the upgraded version of the Wii U could play all Nintendo games in 1080p and all of them in 60fps. And that's a really minor thing. That's not something a lot of consumers are going to be like, oh, I need to go buy this because it's 1080p, 60fps. But then at the same time, those that want that product, that want that improved experience, are probably going to be willing to go plunk down the money for it. And I think that's where the upgrades can work. And I know some fans get, oh man, I got to spend, you know, two, three hundred bucks on a new system every few years. Okay, well, we already do it for our mobile devices. I mean, it, it's not really a whole lot different with our video game systems. And the way technology advances, really, um, shouldn't we want this? Why, why do we want to play a, an extremely outdated system for six or seven years? Uh, just to justify the initial price we jumped in on, I guess? I, I don't know. Gaming's expensive, and I think Nintendo is starting to understand that people who buy game consoles and game handhelds and, you know, put, buy their PS4s and their Xbox Ones and their Wii U's, um, they're the kind of people that are okay spending money on video games. They're, they're kind of a niche crowd. Now, that doesn't mean that niche crowd's not, you know, bigger than we think. It could, it could be an 80 million or so plus crowd, but there's a lot bigger crowd on mobile devices. You're going to get a lot more people buying your mobile games, potentially, especially if they're free to play or, you know, really cheap $1 games um, compared to buying your home console stuff. Well, that doesn't mean there's not a crowd for it. And I think Nintendo's recognizing this, that, that the PlayStation 4 and what it's doing right now and its 20 plus million console sales in just over a year is insane. And it, it, it's doing it because it's catering to a niche crowd. It's it completely ignoring the kind of people that like mobile games, and it's focusing strictly on the uh, the hardcore gamers, as it were. And I hate using that term hardcore. I, I think it's just more of a gamers that have money and want um, richer experiences, I guess. And Nintendo recognizes this, and I think they're recognizing that one way that they could do it different than the competition is not only release a platform that's competitive and uh, appeals on its own. And I think Nintendo is starting to realize that games alone do not sell systems. If that was true, the Wii U would be the number one selling system uh, in the history of Nintendo, uh, as far as I'm concerned, with the quality of games they have. I personally think that the Wii U contains the best stable of games Nintendo's ever made. And this is my personal opinion. This is not a fact. Uh, and I'm just talking about Nintendo games. I think the Super Nintendo had the best overall library. But... Uh, the Wii U for me has Nintendo's best games they've ever made and I love that and we still have Zelda U coming later this year to get all excited about and I think that potentially could be the best Zelda ever made 
I think that about every Zelda game that comes out, so don't get all, oh man, here he goes again. It, it, it certainly looks like it's going to appeal to me. And Nintendo, I think, is starting to realize that games alone do not sell hardware. I mean, yeah, some people will buy a Wii U this fall to play Zelda U. Some bought it to play Smash. Some bought it to play Mario Kart. Some bought it to play Donkey Kong last spring. Uh, this is true. This is all true. But not a lot of people. And yet, the PlayStation 4 doesn't have a lot of games. A lot of exclusive games. A lot of good games, as it were. They're kind of lacking that big blockbuster hit that would sell systems, yet they're already breaking records in first-year sales with 20-plus million consoles sold. And I think Nintendo's taking a lesson out of that. They're learning that uh, games alone don't sell. you got to make something that appeals to the people that you're trying to sell to. And the system itself can appeal to those people. Um, a system that's powerful, that people find is a value buy. It's $400 to buy a PlayStation 4. That's more expensive than both the Xbox One and the uh, Wii U, but people still buy it more than either console. And they buy it because they think it's a value buy. They view what's in the box to be worth more than what they're spending on it. So they look at it as, oh, the PlayStation 4 looks like it should be a $600 system, but they're selling it for 400 bucks. Feels like a deal. So they're going to buy it. On top of that, they're buying it for potential. That they see that current games that are coming out in it that may not excite them are in 1080p. They're in 60 FPS. They're in this. They're in that. They're better. They're a step ahead of what the competition is doing. And they say, okay, well, a future game I like, say The Last Guardian, that might never come out. Um, they might buy it on the potential that game might come out. And that might be in 1080p. And that might be 60 FPS. And that might be a game that blows their minds. I think Nintendo's starting to realize this, so they want to go about it more the Apple way, though. They, they like the way Apple does things with the iterations of the phones. Um, and they like the, the unified operating system. And Nintendo's going to do that. So, for starters, let's, let's dispel something right now. Mobile does not mean no more hardware. Nintendo is going to continue to do hardware until it's no longer profitable. The Wii U is profitable right now. And if the Wii U lasts another one, two, let's say the Wii U gets another two and a half to three years out of it. Uh, starting from today, which is pretty reasonable. If it comes out in 2017, it's 2015 right now, you're looking at about two and a half years worth of um, content and sales left for that system. So the Wii is profitable now, and it remains profitable through the end of its life, which, why wouldn't it? Uh, it's probably going to make more money for Nintendo than it lost the last two years. Um, and it lost quite a bit the last two years. But if it's making money now, and... The big games are coming out now, and Zelda U is coming out, and who you knows, maybe another 3D Mario, even though they said 3D Mario is not coming to the next system, um, which is fine. Maybe they're planning it to launch the next system with it. Uh, the point is, is that they're making money on it now, and they're going to continue to make money on it. They already make money on the 3DS. It's going to be a profitable generation for them, just not as profitable as they thought it would be. When you throw that in there, Nintendo's going to keep making hardware until they're not making money anymore. And it can't just be not making money for a couple of years. It's got to be not making money for, you know, five, six, seven years, you know, which would expand, you know, one or two generations in a row of not making money. And then you could see Nintendo not doing hardware. Uh, it also helps that Miyamoto, their main, you know, designer, the god in gaming, uh, likes and prefers making game on Nintendo hardware. So as long as he's around, there's obviously going to be Nintendo hardware because he thinks that they could do things with Nintendo hardware. The competition doesn't. And um, one example I just gave is the fact that they could offer hardware upgrades. They could release a system that essentially does... It is basically a PlayStation 4. Their next system could be the same specs as a PlayStation 4 for all I care. Okay? It could be a PlayStation 4 with the Wii U um, uh, uh, Pro Controller with a Pro Controller-style controller, and they could improve their online network, get voice chat going, give us all the features. Yeah, give us Twitch streaming, whatever. Give us all the features the other consoles have. So it's basically a PlayStation 4 that's Nintendo-branded, and then it, you know, third parties got a reason to bring games over um, to port it because now it matches in more closely in architecture and power, and Nintendo games will be on it, and people will buy it because it's got Nintendo games, and they might buy it because it's got some third-party games, and it's something to get excited about. But then you say, oh, well, the PlayStation 4... And uh, PlayStation 5 is going to be coming out, you know. PlayStation 5 will be, in 2017, it will have been it will have been four years. So you figure PlayStation 5 is coming out in two years. Uh, so how can the next system combat the PlayStation 5? Well, simple. By the time the PlayStation 5 comes out, Nintendo can offer an upgrade system. It might not be as powerful as the PlayStation 5, but it could, you know, say, throw four more gigs of RAM in. Throw an extra core on the processor. You know, maybe a slightly beefier GPU. 
they could do that. And it could play all the old games and be totally cross-compatible with the old console. However, there's going to be a few exclusives here and there. And then if that system blows up, then that's going to be what you're going to make all your new games for. And suddenly, it plays all the old Wii U games, backwards compatible now, cross compatible, and it plays all the new games. And then their next system after that could either be a full new system or it could be another hardware upgrade. And then they could offer more system than that, and it's backwards compatible with the old games and with the Wii U games. And before you know it, um, you're starting to offer an ecosystem where no matter when you release a game, it always plays on whatever the current hardware is. And I think that's what Nintendo's going for. Um, the PlayStation 4 doesn't play PlayStation 3 games, okay? The PlayStation 5 might not play PlayStation 4 games. And I say this because even though the PlayStation 3 played PlayStation 2 games right away, it only did that for a short time. The Xbox 360 played Xbox games, but not all of them, only select games. And the Xbox One doesn't play Xbox 360 games. So one thing PlayStation is doing is they're making a streaming service. And I don't think Nintendo's really into the streaming service because there's downfalls of that. You have to have a fast internet connection. This is before we get into any problems that their servers could have, um, communicating over long distances. you got to have fast internet, and not everybody has that. And that alone is going to very li- it's going to really limit where you could bring uh, the PlayStation Network to and, and the PlayStation Now or whatever it's called. So I think it's a great idea. I, I, I applaud Sony for trying to basically be the Netflix of video games. But uh, it's a lot harder. It's not easier to stream a show than it is to stream a video game because you have to put input into that video game. Um, and so there's got to be cross-communication between user and server, and I, I don't know that that's going to go over very well, uh, or that we're ready for that, or that we don't have fiber internet everywhere, okay? If fiber internet was a thing worldwide, it'd be, that'd be what we're doing. But Nintendo has, has the ability to upgrade their hardware and do something different, be the Apple of video game hardware, and I think that's great, and I think it could work. And I think what Iowata is trying to do with the mobile games is saying, okay, we recognize that there's a lot of mobile and a lot of uh, smart device players. So we can bring our IP over there, bring them brand new experiences, be it a new Dr. Mario type game, Link's Crossbow Training 2, um, you know, mini games from Zelda over, or whatever they do. They can introduce people to the franchise, try to get more fans. Okay, hey, I really like this Zelda game on, uh, on the app channel. And I just saw a commercial for this brand new Legend of Zelda game uh, for Wii U or for NX or for whatever the next console is. And they're like, you know what? I, I recognize that from my phone. And they look into it it's like, whoa, this blows my mind. This looks way better than my phone game. Oh, it's 60 bucks. I got to buy this new hardware for it. But wait, now that there's this new Mario game too. And I put from my phone. They start recognizing they're playing, you know, four, five, six different Nintendo games on their phone. And they start recognizing these bigger games. And Iowata's hope is that they see these bigger games and they want these bigger games and they go buy the hardware to play these bigger games. So kind of like they hope the Wii would kind of be um, an introduction for gamers and then get them into the Wii, Wii U. Well, what happened was the Wii became an introduction for gamers and then they just stayed playing those type of games and they moved on to the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One. Now Nintendo is going to try to do the same thing but with mobile devices, which will always be around, and then bring that over to their hardware and they're hoping it translates to sales. And hey, it could work. I mean, let's be real, it could work. It could also totally fail, and Nintendo's hardware could tank, and then we could obviously eventually see a day Nintendo doesn't hardware anymore, and that's what people are afraid of. I still want Nintendo hardware, don't you? I think there's enough. I think there's enough people out there that still want Nintendo hardware that they're going to they're going to continue to buy it. And if they start offering stuff that appeals to other people who own other pieces of hardware, um, they very well could turn it around. And suddenly they are doing really well on mobile, really well on the home console and portable console side. And then they're doing really well with their quality of life device. There's a potential that Nintendo could really blow up here and actually get bigger than Sony. And arguably, they've been bigger than Sony for a while until the PlayStation 4 hits. Well, here's what I want Nintendo's hardware to be, and I haven't really gotten much into this. So when you when you see the term NX, um, I think of Nintendo crossover. Uh, I say this because X in Japan usually means cross. Okay, so if you remember, they announced the game um, Fire Emblem X um, Shingemi Tensei or Tensu or whatever. There's an X in between there. That X means cross over. Okay, they're crossing those games over into each other. And X in other games over there often means crossover. It doesn't always mean the Neural Enum of 10. Now, obviously, Mega Man X kind of meant Mega Man 10 at the time, but it really didn't. It really was its own thing. Um, but the point is, is that X means cross in Japan. And since this is a term coming from Iowata, which means it's coming from Japan, uh, that to me says crossover. Okay? 
So what they're going to do, and Nintendo's talked about this before, is tr is trying to unify their their divisions, their their handheld and their hardware. So what they're going to do is they're going to have, and I'm putting this on record, and I really believe this is going to happen. They're going to make, there's gonna, still going to be two systems. Let's start with that. There's still going to be a handheld system. There's still going to be a home console. They are not going to completely combine them and make a hybrid system. Uh, I say this because I, I, I don't, I don't think it's... They'd have to make a system that's 100% portable that basically you plug a cord into and then plug it into your TV. And I don't, I don't think that's realistic. Or even if you have to buy a wireless box to communicate. Either way, you want that hardware directly plugged into your TV. I don't think they're doing that. I think what they're going to do is they're going to have a new console. Yes, it's going to be probably at least as powerful as the PlayStation 4. And I say that because by that time, that kind of, that kind of hardware is going to be cheap. Okay? It is. It's going to be cheap. They're going to be able to sell that system for $250. Easy. They might push it to $300 just because, especially if the PlayStation 4 is still $400, but the $250 bucks they could release it at. Heck, they might even go a step further, okay? So let's say they, they do another Wii U where it's a slightly ahead of the previous generation. Okay, that's fine. Um, but they're also going to announce that they're going to have, like, two systems, okay? They're going to have that, and then they're going to have a premium system. They're going to have that $500 system. Okay? This is just for the home console side. There's going to be a $500 system. That $500 system is going to do everything the old system does, plus have extra hardware in it. So the extra hardware allows you to stream. That extra hardware allows you to have 1080p, 60fps on every game. Um, the extra hardware allows you to do a lot of different things, and there might potentially be some exclusive games. But a majority of the games are going to be made cross-compatible, just with extra features on the, on the more powerful hardware. Okay, that's the home console side. So they're going to they're gonna stick with their basic and their premium package like they did for the Wii U. So the differences are going to be a lot more drastic. That's why there's going to be a bigger price difference between them. Because there's going to be a drastic difference between them. Because they're, they're going to offer versions, is what I'm saying. But then for the handheld, there's going to be one handheld at launch, okay? Um, it, it's, it's going to be, I feel it's going to be one screen only. Um, and I say this because they're going to start moving all of their touchscreen ideas and touchscreen gameplay concepts. They're going to start moving that to mobile. So they're going to go back to one screen. So you're going to see something like this. Okay? It's not going to be this big. Obviously, this is, the Wii U gamepad's pretty big. They're not going to expect that because this, this isn't portable. They're probably going to ditch the clamshell design. Uh, and that's fine. Um, the, the DS had its heyday. The 3DS had its heyday. It's time to ditch the design. So they're going to go something similar to this. The screen's probably going to be smaller, probably more like this big. Um, I'm hoping that they go with the IPS screen. They've done the IPS LCD screen on the new Nintendo 3DS XL only. So chances are they're going to do that. And I'm hoping they bump the resolution uh, you know, a little bit past 480p. Hopefully up to 720p. Hopefully they can get all the way up to that kind of resolution. They're going to have you know, at least one joystick, hopefully two, or thumbsticks, you know, if they decide to stick with the sliders. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot pretty similar to what the 3DS is now. Uh, with beefier hardware and a better screen. And this screen will probably still be a 3D display, I'm guessing. I don't think Nintendo's abandoning the 3D display, so you're still going to have your two cameras up here and the two cameras in the back because they're going to make it compatible with old 3DS games. So they're going to want you to experience them in 3D on here, um, especially the old 3DS games that do not require the touchscreen. Um, they might offer patches that let you play it on here, but even if they don't, let's say they ditch it. They, 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 it's not compatible with 3DS games. That's fine. They're making this compatible for the future, not for the past. So they're trying to unify everything now. Okay, so you're going to have the games on here. So what I think is going to happen, and this is me personally, and what they're going to do is they're going to take the games that are playable on this, on your handheld system. Remember, I'm not talking about the Wii U right now. I'm, I'm using this as an example for a handheld system of the future. Okay? They're going to take the games from this, and they're going to make it playable on your home console system. Okay? So you could buy games for this, but play it on your home console system. Now, how is that? They could stream from this. They could, they could make it so the hardware from this does wireless communicate and stream. Now, as I talked about, that's not ideal, you know, to play on here and then play on the screen. But just bear with me, okay? They, they could find a way to make it work. Okay, but let's say you stream from this to your home console that beams it to your TV, and then you're playing your mobile game on your TV. That's entirely possible. They could also make it so this system just has a little plug-in, and you plug it into a USB spot on your home console, and you just set it down, and you plug the game in, and you play. And now it's just like the Game Boy Play that you used to be able to buy for the Super Nintendo, where you plugged it in on the bottom, and you could play all your Game Boy games. So they could do that, and they've done this in the past. So they could do it again with this. So suddenly, you could buy games for this and play it on your system. You could also buy, say, a $20 add-on. You know, Say you don't want to own this, but you really want to play the new Zelda game on handheld. 
Well, you could buy a $20 add-on that does the same thing. You plug it in with your USB cable, you put it in the cartridge, or whatever they end up using, and ta-da! Suddenly, you're playing your mobile games on your TV. So now, your home console can play these mobile games, and they can play the home console games. What's the home console, then, got to do with this? How, how are console games going to come to this? Well, I don't know that Nintendo's going to try to do what the PS Vita does. The PlayStation Vita and the PlayStation or the PSP, you were able to take those systems on the go, connect to the internet, and then try to wirelessly communicate with your, your system and play games remotely like that. I don't know that Nintendo's going to try that. Uh, I, I, the only reason I say they're not going to is because it kind of doesn't work really well um, outside of the home as it is with the PlayStation Vita and the PSP, so I don't know that Nintendo's going to do that. What they're going to do is they're going to make this handheld system become exactly what this is. This is the Wii U gamepad. They're going to make the handheld system become a gamepad. They're going to make it so you can wirelessly communicate with your console and stream those console games to your your handheld screen and be able to play your console games on your handheld. And the, how this is going to be different than what the gamepad does is, for starters, the console is not going to come with the handheld system. So games aren't going to be designed for the touchscreen or for the streaming or whatever they end up doing with the screen, okay? It's not going to be designed for that. However, it doesn't have to be if it's just streaming the games to it. So what they're going to do to also make it different is that this handheld system is also going to not have like that 10-foot range. It's going to have a huge range. The signal is going to be really strong. You're going to be able to probably go out into your backyard a good 100 feet away from your console and still be able to play it. And I think another thing they're going to do to even make this more possible is they're going to have an option in your network settings to be able to use your wireless network as an extra broadcast. Um, kind of like you know how you buy those, you can buy these little wireless things, you can plug it in the wall and extend the range of your wireless router. Um, that's what I think Nintendo is going to offer. They're going to offer you the ability to use your own router um, to kind of extend the range that you could use your handheld system streaming games from the system. So you could you could basically do what PlayStation Vita does. It works really well in the home on your home network. So they could do that with the handheld. So you could go outside in your yard, you know, go by the campfire, bust out your system, and stream games right from your home console um, outside where you're with your buddies. That's awesome. Uh, that's great, and I think that's what Nintendo is going to do. And as I said, I think they're going to be offering hardware upgrades over the years. So um, you might still see, you know, a bigger screen version because they seem to like doing that. But but beyond that, you're going to see three years after that thing launches, four years, you're going to see new hardware again that's slightly upgraded and slightly better and does things better. And then you know after that, you're going to see brand new hardware. You know, it comes out three, four years after that. And with same with the Wii U, even if they offer the premium and the basic bundle. Three, four years later, they're going to offer another system that's even more powerful. And I think that's because they just like the Apple. They like the way Apple works, and they like the operating system, and they like the idea that everything works on everything. So even, if, let's say you make a game for that new hardware that they released six years or five years after they launched the brand new NX system. It, it's okay. That, that, hard, that software might still work on your old hardware. It might be laggy a little bit. It might not be a high resolution, but it'll play. It'll work. But it'll work way, 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 way better on the new hardware. So I think that's what Nintendo's going for. They're trying to become the Apple of the video game industry. Um, that's my opinions. Obviously, I could be wrong. We have crazy stuff going on in the background here. This was a really, really long episode of The Boss Man. Uh, I had a lot to say. Nintendo dropped some bombshells. Um, bottom line, their hardware is not going anywhere until it's not profitable, and it's profitable today as it is with what they're already doing, so there's no reason to think it's going anywhere. Yes, they're making mobile games. I'm actually excited about it because I play mobile games uh, probably more than I play my 3DS, and that's hard for me to say, but it's true. And uh, I'm excited for the mobile games. I'm excited about their hardware future. I'm excited about making their systems a heck of a lot more cross-compatible and making the games able to be played on both systems. I think that's going to really, really increase the value of a Nintendo system. I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I don't... I, I understand people's fear because there's always the potential that they're going to go out of business with hardware. Um, but that was already there before they announced this mobile stuff. There was already a chance they might give up on the hardware someday. So... Nothing's changed. It's still Nintendo. I'm still excited. Um, hopefully we get a Zelda mobile game at the end of the year because they plan to release some by the end of the year. And I like mobile games. And heck, I wouldn't mind a companion app that works with Zelda U. I mean, why not? I, I like my Madden companion app on the Xbox One, so why not for Wii U? Also, this shirt, this is obviously a new a new jacket. I got this off Amazon. It cost me about 30 bucks. 
kind of cool. Um, it's got this sword and shield on the back. Kind of neat. Kind of sweet. That's all I got for this week. So, uh, if you really like this episode, you could obviously follow us, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. You could also follow me at Nate Jantz. Uh, you could also follow me on Meverse. Um, my username on Meverse is Zelda Informer. So, if you want to look me up that way, Zelda Informer, one word. You can also follow us on Tumblr, on Google Plus, on Facebook, on our own site, Twitter. Um, lots of stuff. We'll have stuff floating and flying, hit me in the face. So I hope you enjoyed this episode this week, and I will see you guys next time.